tracing. So uh, when we hear tracing, I think first thing that we come up is just stack trace. So this is way how we can trace our application in case of some problem. So once we have some, uh, once we cut some uh, exception, we can look at logs and see where is the problem. Um, very easy way and uh, very efficient way. But what will happen uh, if we do not use monolith architecture, but we use a distributed um, distributed uh, system uh, um, like here in the graph. So um, let's assume that our ecosystem is fully built on um, different microservices, a lot of different microservices, and they interact each other. And um, once, how to understand the uh, behavior of application and troubleshoot problems. So uh, this is what distributed tracing pattern tries to solve. Um, so um, one more time, let's maybe not the best uh, graph, but let me explain uh, what I tried to imagine. Um, so, um, here I put user, but actually that could be any UI or any even backend application uh, that uh, generates some uh, processing. Um, for instance, some cron job that uh, triggers and um, does some acts. So um, let's assume that we, or our team, uh, we are uh, owners of service A, microservice A. And um, we know from some monitor monitoring tool or from, uh, in worst case, from uh, support team that there is a problem because our user, end user on the UI, for instance, gets um, some errors. So, um, we will again look at our logs and see that, oh, problem is not on our end. The problem is somewhere uh, on the uh, side of service B uh, because we interact with it. We uh, request some data from it and we got a uh, 500 error, for instance. Um, so, Will we go to the support channel of service uh, B? Um, we may, um, but then guys will look at logs and say, hey, the problem is not on our end. You should reach out to the support channel of a uh, team that uh, owns service C and D and E and again and again and again. So. Uh, the time of determining the problem is huge. Uh, the way of determining the problem is very painful. So, uh, because in this case, you will go deeper and deeper and deeper. And uh, finally, you've reached out to a uh, team that owns service X and they will say, oh, thank you. There is some problem. Uh, with connection to our database. So finally, they will help um, uh, to solve the problem. So initially problem was not uh, on your side. Um, so how can we um, reduce the determining time and the way at all? So the solution that is proposed by distributed tracing um, pattern is the following. Uh, so first of all, you need to assign uh, each external request and unique external request ID. So here I put request ID, but also you can find different 
uh, terms like uh, trace ID, what will be the same or request marker. Um, you should pass the external request ID to all services that are involved in handling the request. So uh, the initial request should initiate uh, the generating a new request ID and associate it with it. So uh, once it was generated by, um, let's say, some UI, then this means that uh, service A should not generate it at the second time. It should just take an existing one and uh, use it for uh, any other uh, interactions with databases, with some message brokers, and with different microservices. And doesn't matter which API is used. Um, OK. Uh, also, it is necessary to include the external request ID in uh, all log messages. Uh, later, I will uh, show you an example how it can look like. And um, obviously, uh, you will find that this should work. Uh, and records all information like a start time, end time uh, that is related to requests and operations to some external uh, service, centralized service that is responsible for storing and processing this data. Uh, why do we need start time and end time? Uh, because before that, we were talking only about some errors. But um, actually, um, there could be no errors. But at the same time, uh, some service in these long chains um, generates some delay. And um, uh, there is no way. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, in case when some uh, service uh, generates some delay, um, it will be also very painful, very hard to uh, determine which service exactly, or maybe some database or something like that. So uh, distributed tracing allows us to reduce time for uh, determining uh, some lags, some delays as well. Um, okay. Um, hope uh, the problem is clear and a solution is more uh, or less clear as well. So let's try to look how it can uh, be on the real life. First of all, I want to work with blocks because I think that will be the first thing that you will look at. Sorry uh, for the quality of this screenshot. I wanted to put a, a lot of information, but now the quality of it is really poor. So uh, as we said, every single request should be logged within um, the trace ID. So here you can see that Trace ID and um, yeah, several uh, words about Splunk. I think most of you um, played with Splunk or even work it together. Um, so um, Splunk is like a, a aggregating uh, logger logging system for distributed systems. So uh, it um, contains blocks from all microservices and <clears throat> and uh, give you um, um, ability to query some data. For here, we query trace ID and um, all our information, uh, all the information we can see here is uh, related to our request, uh, not to any other request. So in case of some error, you will be uh, able to um, uh, filter out all unnecessary 
logs and much quicker determine the problem. Um, what else? Not to... um, okay. um, so uh, probably um, somebody will ask, uh, so um, generating this request ID uh, should to uh, put this uh, ID to every single service uh, that we interact with. Should we change our uh, API to make it possible? So answer is not. So uh, first of all, you shouldn't do this by yourself because uh, here is um, open tracing API. Historically, that was open tracing API, but open tracing API has been uh, archived and the new API um, for distributed tracing is called uh, as open telemetry. Uh, so um, implementing this API, um, we have a chance to, uh, to trace all our systems and subsystems. Uh, for instance, uh, um, open tracing API is already implemented by most message brokers, but uh, by most um, um, SQL uh, drivers for uh, SQL servers, uh, for some non-relation databases, and so on. So, um, uh, so all distributed tracing is based uh, on the uh, open telemetry. But what about uh, request ID? How can we get it? Uh, and how can we expose it to different services uh, without changing the API? So talking about Java, uh, it is built on thread local uh, functionality. Um, I think most of you know this functionality. Um, it allows us to um, make some data static in con uh, in the scope of um, uh, some thread. So you shouldn't, uh, so you can reach out to this data uh, from your thread uh, as a static. And uh, that's why you don't need to change uh, your API. In it will be uh, done easier. So um, the other important thing that um, you should care about, if you process some request uh, using several threads, then you will probably have to uh, control this situation manually because um, very likely, uh, for every single, uh, every new thread, a new request uh, ID will be generated by default. Um, what else? Oh, uh, how can we get this tra request ID, trace ID? So um, here I want to show you, because uh, we've seen, um, just a moment. Uh, we've seen um, the logs from real example, from real system uh, that was generated by my ex-colleague uh, that still works on Verbo. That's a sub-brand of Expedia Group, uh, our big partner uh, in SoftSer. Um, so uh, most of my experience was uh, got there. So and examples will be from um, the, from that period as well. So here we put a trace ID, but how can we get it? So it's just a unique ID. Uh, actually, everything is pretty simple. When you open some um, web page, um, then um, you can 
look trace ID in your response headers. Um, there you can see that here is a full UUID uh, as a trace ID, but um, on Splunk, we saw that uh, it was cut to some uh, first part just or two parts. I don't remember exactly. So uh, it was uh, taken from here from response headers. Um, what else? Um, um, <laughs> so uh, that's um, uh, so hope how to determine um, where is the root problem um, you know now and uh, what about some delays as I said before that distributed tracing um, can help us to determine which service worked um, and for a long time for some unexpected time over our uh, agreement estimations. Um, this can be done uh, very, um, very in a very elegant way using some distributed tracing systems. Uh, today, I want to present you Haystack as a one uh, of uh, appropriate platforms. Uh, to be honest, this is not the most familiar one. The most famous one, uh, probably um, um, some of you um, had a chance to work with Datadog or Euralic, and they are really great. Uh, but uh, the reason why, why I chose this one is uh, because uh, of several reasons, actually. First of all, I had a chance to work with it personally. Uh, the second thing is that it is um, open source, so it is for free. So this is one yet product of Expedia Group. So uh, everybody can work with it so you can uh, follow Haystack um, site and find all appropriate information about use cases, about some deployment um, uh, needs, about some, um, I don't know, uh, some uh, appropriate information that is allowed to uh, haystack um, and also um, the most <laughs> great thing for me for this presentation uh, was that you can easily uh, deploy uh, haystack uh, locally this is not so easy uh, part but uh, there are um, examples and explanations how to do that and i can say that uh, i managed to uh, deploy it more or less easily without big changes on my end so uh, uh, there is a docker uh, compose file and you can just start it and look uh, so let's look at it i've already launched it let me uh, go to the main page um, so here you can see that it is deployed locally. Um, here you can look at graph. Uh, I need to say that all this uh, data is stubbed. So uh, this is not real data. They just, uh, uh, this data can uh, be used for the demonstration in a good way. Uh, so First of all, you see that you have a graph uh, because I think most of you will not know which services are um, uh, are involved into some request because in real life, uh, very likely you will own, let's say, this service and you will know nothing about these services. 
So uh, in some cases, that could be very, very uh, useful to know, to at least have a chance to get appropriate information which uh, service is involved uh, into all interactions to process some request generated by, let's say, UI. Um, also, if you open, okay, traces. So uh, here, um, RESTful API is used under the hood, so you can find appropriate endpoints and, uh, and even in some information about errors. So you can uh, see total duration and so on. And if you press here, you can even see the visualization of your request. So um, as a developer that owns Stark uh, service, uh, you will probably know maybe about this um, service because you write a code that interacts with this service but uh, having uh, traced data, you will be able to find more and more data. And as I said, not only some services can be um, displayed here, but also like uh, drivers for SQL servers, for um, message brokers and so on. All of them can support uh, most of them can support um, distributed tracing and um, as a result uh, be displayed here in so elegant way. Um, that's probably it. That's all I wanted to present to you. I didn't want to overload uh, presentation with some uh, deep technical details. So if you have some questions, you're welcome. Yeah, maybe uh, someone have questions about presentations. Someone? <laughs> no, looks like no. Okay, uh, thank Everybody's you. Everybody's frozen. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Anton, for your time, for this presentation, and thanks all who join us today. I am uh, I will happy to see all of you next uh, event, and have uh, a good day, everyone. Bye.